Boeing 757 is ready to taxi into position. Boeing 757, proceed on the runway. 757. addition to the Boeing family of versatile jet transport. An airplane that's on target, on schedule. Rolled out in January 1982, it underwent an intensive test program leading to certification. The plane, the Boeing 757. The story of the Boeing 757 begins in the 1970s, a time when airlines were searching for a more fuel-efficient and versatile aircraft to replace older models like the Boeing 727. Facing rising fuel costs and evolving market demands, Boeing set out to create a narrow-body jet that could carry more passengers over longer distances while using less fuel. Designing the 757 was no small task. Boeing prioritized aerodynamic efficiency, giving the aircraft a sleek, elongated fuselage, a distinctive pointed nose, and a supercritical wing design to reduce drag. To power the 757, engineers carefully chose advanced turbofan engines, either Rolls-Royce RB211s or Pratt & Whitney JT10Ds, which delivered exceptional fuel efficiency and quieter operation compared to its predecessors. Inside, the aircraft was built with flexibility in mind, offering a two-class cabin layout for up to 239 passengers and the ability to operate on both short domestic routes and transatlantic flights. This versatility would go on to make the 757 a favorite for airlines navigating a changing aviation industry. When the Boeing 757 was officially launched in 1978, it quickly caught the attention of major airlines looking to modernize their fleets. Eastern Airlines and British Airways were the first to place orders, recognizing the aircraft's potential to replace their aging 727s while offering improved fuel efficiency and longer range. Eastern Airlines received the first 757 in 1983 and put it into service on domestic routes in the United States. The aircraft proved to be a game changer with its ability to handle high demand routes while cutting operational costs. British Airways followed shortly after, introducing the 757 on European routes, where it showcased its range and performance on shorter, high-frequency flights. The airline that doesn't plan for the future may not have one. Five years ago, Eastern saw the future in a remarkable aircraft. Now it's here. The new Boeing 757, the most advanced, most fuel-efficient commercial jet ever built. It's going to help Eastern hold down the cost of flying for years to come. We earn our wings for you. We're Eastern, America's favorite the late 80s and early 90s marked the golden age of the Boeing 757 as the aircraft became a favorite among airlines around the world. Its unique blend of performance, efficiency, and versatility propelled it to the forefront of the aviation industry. During this period, the 757 truly hit its stride, carving out a niche market that few other aircraft could match. What set the 757 apart was its remarkable operation flexibility. Airlines found it ideal for both high-density domestic routes and longer international flights, particularly on transatlantic services. With its ability to take off from short runways and operate efficiently at higher altitudes, the 757 opened up new possibilities for connecting smaller cities to major hubs and distant destinations. 
This capability earned it a reputation as the unsung hero of transatlantic travel, especially for airlines like Iceland Air and Delta, which used it to serve routes that would have been uneconomical for larger wide-body jets. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The terrorist attacks of September 11th were a turning point for the aviation industry, and the Boeing 757 was directly involved in the tragic events of that day. Two of the four hijacked planes were 757s, American Flight 77, which struck the Pentagon, and United Flight 93, which crashed into a Pennsylvania field. These events marked one of the darkest days in aviation history, and the aftermath of 9-11 had a profound impact on the airline industry as a whole. Passenger demand plummeted due to heightened fears of flying, leading to significant financial losses for airlines. For the 757, the effects were mixed. On one hand, its efficiency and versatility made it a valuable asset for airlines adapting to reduce demand. Its ability to serve both short and long haul routes allowed carriers to optimize capacity during a time when filling larger planes became increasingly difficult. But on the other hand, the industry-wide financial strain led to the early retirement of some 757s as airlines restructured their operations to survive. In the years following 9-11, the airline industry began a slow and steady rebound as passenger confidence returned and travel demand increased. Delta, American, Continental, and United all maintained large fleets of 757s, recognizing their unique value in the evolving market. The 757's versatility allowed these carriers to adjust to fluctuating demand, with the aircraft serving everything from high-capacity domestic routes to medium-haul transatlantic flights. Its ability to operate at a smaller airport and handle challenging routes like those in mountainous or high-altitude regions also made it indispensable. Mergers in the airline industry during the late 2000s and early 2010s further highlighted the 757's importance. For example, Delta's 2008 merger with Northwest Airlines brought together two of the largest 757 operators in the world, solidifying the aircraft's presence in Delta's fleet. Similarly, United Airlines and Continental Airlines merged in 2010, combining their 757 fleets to expand their transatlantic and domestic networks. American Airlines also relied heavily on the 757 during this time, using it for key routes to the Caribbean, Latin America, and even Europe. Despite its age, the 757 remained competitive thanks to its robust performance, ample range, and ability to efficiently serve routes that were too small for wide-body aircraft, but too long for the narrow-body jets. The rebound in travel and the consolidation of the airline industry ensured that the 757 continued to serve as a workhorse well into the 2010s. The retirement of the 757 from airlines such as American and Allegiant highlights the natural life cycle of an aircraft as it reaches the end of its operational viability. For many airlines, the decision to retire the 757 was driven by a combination of its age, increasing maintenance requirements, and the growing costs associated with operating older aircraft. American retired its 757 fleet in 2020 after decades of service. The aircraft had been a reliable workhorse for both domestic and international routes, but as the fleet aged, keeping the 757 operational became more challenging. Similarly, Allegiant retired its smaller 757 fleet back in 2017. While the aircraft had been a unique part of its operations, particularly for long-haul leisure routes like those to Hawaii, the logistical and financial challenges of maintaining a small, aging subfleet led the airline to phase it out. Today, several airlines continue to operate the Boeing 757, recognizing the aircraft's enduring versatility and performance. Delta remains one of the largest operators, using the 757 for high-demand domestic routes, transcontinental flights, and even flights to Iceland. The aircraft continues to serve as a reliable option for Delta on both short and medium-haul routes. United Airlines also maintains a fleet of 757s, deploying them for both domestic and international flights. The aircraft's ability to handle high passenger volumes and operate on shorter runways makes it especially valuable for United's transatlantic network and high-frequency domestic routes. In Europe, Iceland Air is one of the few remaining carriers still flying the 757 regularly. 
primarily for transatlantic routes between North America with Reykjavik as a central hub. Its ability to operate efficiently on routes from smaller airports has made it a key player in Iceland's air network. Jet2, a UK-based airline, just retired their last 757 as of today, January 6, 2025. Additionally, Argo operations continue to benefit from the 757's design. Converted freighters from operators like FedEx and UPS use the aircraft for regional and transcontinental shipping, where its ability to carry significant payloads while operating from airports with shorter runways is critical. These cargo carriers value the 757's reliability and operational efficiency, ensuring its continued role in air freight. Although the 757's role in passenger service has been diminished, it remains a workhorse for these airlines, contributing to their ongoing operation in both passenger and cargo sectors. While the 757 is gradually being retired from many airline fleets, there is no direct successor to the aircraft that can match its unique combination of range, capacity, and versatility. The 757's ability to efficiently serve both short domestic routes and longer international flights, along with its ability to operate from smaller airports with shorter runways, is a rare set of capabilities that current aircraft options don't fully replicate. That said, newer models like the A321 XLR and the 737 MAX 10 are seen as potential replacements for the 757 in certain markets. The A321 XLR, with its extended range and larger capacity compared to previous A321 models, is increasingly favored by airlines for medium-haul international routes. While it doesn't quite match the 757's overall capabilities, particularly in terms of payload capacity and range on some longer routes, the A321 XLR does offer a modern fuel-efficient alternative for airlines that want it to serve similar markets. The Boeing 737 MAX 10 is often considered one of the more feasible replacements for the 757, particularly for airlines looking to replace older narrow-body jets on short and medium-haul routes. It can carry up to 230 passengers in a high-density configuration, which aligns well with the 757's capacity, and it also offers a range that can cover many of the routes once served by the 757. However, while the 737 MAX 10 shows promise as a potential successor, it has faced delays in FAA certification that have impacted its timeline for delivery. Originally, Boeing had hoped to receive FAA approval for the MAX 10 around 2020, but a series of setbacks related to regulatory hurdles, particularly around cockpit design and safety features, has delayed certification. The MAX 10's larger size and increased passenger capacity led to more stringent requirements from the FAA, particularly concerning the aircraft's cockpit design and the need to ensure it met all the safety standards. As of now, Boeing is working with the FAA to resolve these issues, and although the MAX 10 has already completed several rounds of testing, the aircraft's entry into service has been postponed. Boeing has continued to push back the expected delivery date, and while airlines have shown strong interest in the MAX 10, the delays have created uncertainty about when the aircraft will be available for fleet integration. The 757 has left an incredible mark on aviation history. From its groundbreaking design and early operational success to its place in the golden age of air travel, the 757 became a beloved workhorse for airlines around the world. Despite its aging fleet and the challenges brought on by 9-11, the 757 has remained a reliable and resilient aircraft. However, the 757's time in the skies is gradually coming to an end. Yet, as we've seen, no single aircraft has fully replaced the 757's unique combination of capabilities. Though its retirement from many fleets marked the end of an era, the legacy of the 757 still lives on in the skies today. It may be nearing the end of its time in commercial service, but its impact on the airline industry will be felt for decades to come.